Well, I'm starting this video in Wings 3D because I need to create a mesh object for the uh, for the multi-replicate. So to quickly just create something for the multi-replicate, I'm going to use the right to click to use the contact sensitive menu, create a cube, select edges, select one of the edges, press G to select all of the edges, right click and bevel it down, right click again and mirror, select one of the faces, press I for identical and press smooth to create this sort of clover leaf shape. I'll press smooth again to make it a bit smoother, then press space to cancel, select lines again, select one of the lines, press G to select all of the lines, press C to cut the lines, right click and I'll slide that down towards the bottom there then I'll right click and bevel that line so it opens out and then I'll extrude that line extrude normal I'll extrude that out a bit and then I'm gonna right click and extrude it out a little bit more the middle mouse button allows you to rotate the scene space to deselect everything select lines again select a line either side of the uh, area I want to select use L to loop around the shape to select all those lines, select faces and press minus to bring it into the area I want to extrude, right click and I'll extrude that to create a sort of balcony, I can extrude it a little bit again and then if I use plus it'll select round the edge and if I extrude it again that'll create a thicker edge to that balcony edge there and then I'll select lines again, select one of the lines, press G press C to cut it and I'll bevel it out and then I'll go and extrude but I'll extrude it into the surface this time and then I'll use shell extrude to create a shape that fits around that then I'll select to entire object right click move while holding the control key down to take that extruded shell extruded shape right out of the way then select the faces here um, the best way to do that actually is I'll select just one of the lines press G press C again and bevel so this is going to be my windows inset to give some sort of frame right click and hole and then I'll take this entire shape and holding the control key down again fit it back over the windows file and export 3ds overwrite my existing file yes and then go into Bryce right so that's my shape file import object and this will bring the mesh in the mesh will come in grouped because I made it in two parts but you can't instance groups so what I'm going to do is drop it down use the overhead view edit and I'm going to move it to one side of the main origin so and I'm going to ungroup the object I'll just get the attribute, oh I can't get the attributes I need to group it again attributes 20.89 is the height of the grouped object because I'm going to use that as my offset for the instancing so but I can't instance it to with when it's grouped so I need to create the shape and I want to have four of these around a central area but if I use the grouping again I've got the problem so I need to do things in a slightly different way if I select the outside here I'm going to give it a different family so I can separate the windows from the main building and modify the attributes unlock the origin and position and move the position of the origin back to the center and I'm going to show origin as handle so you can see a line pop out there and that's the new origin right for this one that's the windows I'll give it a different family grouping same thing attributes unlock and place the origin in the center and show origin as handle and you see that leaps out to the same position now if I select this object I can copy and paste and then rotate it round its central origin and if I select both these objects now I can copy and paste and then move them round so the multi replicate works with the objects origin so if I select all these now and go to edit multi replicate remember to select instancing because they're not grouped that's going to work well I'll have a rotation of 2 an offset of what was it 20 point point eight nine so that gives me a height and I'll create um, let's say 50 of these so that should now scale up into the sky with lots of instance components now as these were rotated all together then you can once they've moved up you can modify the scale of them per object which can be quite an interesting thing so move it into object space uh, notice the bottom ones are not selectable we'll not worry about that 
in fact I, I will worry about that, I'll select everything probably the best thing to do at this point is get rid of the ground plane then I won't be selecting that accidentally I can drag and drop over all of them and then I'll modify one of the axes and see what effect that has on the shape. You can see from the overhead view that it's it's changed the shape, the appearance bit and it's going to prevent us from seeing into the core of the building which is what I wanted. So there we go I've stretched them out and that's created a slightly sort of different effect. Maybe I've overdone that a bit. I'll just shrink that down a bit more. Just so that it if I, if I look here that those bits are slightly overlapping so you can't see inside on that axis there. There, just touching. Good. Right. Um, use the material here. For example, I'll just give it a very simple glass material. Get rid of fusion, make it transparent, give it 15 reflection. And uh, there you go, it's given a sort of weird twisted shape. I can move the camera away and because I'm going un under the ground it, it won't block off my view. I can, But I suppose what this really needs is better lighting cause, uh, because it's got a quite a fairly complex geometry it will probably benefit from uh, improved lighting so sort of for the final bit of the video then, if I get this, move this round, what I'll do is I'll change the aspect ratio, let's make it 3 across by 4 high 850 so it's more tall and thin shape then I can move my camera in and we'll just look at lighting this because I suppose it's good as time as any to uh, to look at a more sophisticated form of lighting when you've got a more sophisticated model to light so first of all let's um, use image based lighting we can use the sky I could use the entire sky and that will give me more lighting options rendering scene, lower the quality raise the lighting so that's that's giving me lighting all round but if I wanted even more sophisticated lighting I could do things with uh, with obscure lighting setup and that will be probably more efficient for the quality of lighting on the output so I'll light from inside turn off cast shadows make sure that says apply to light source get rid of specularity turn off true ambience optimization include only background we'll leave the sun disabled for now I'll probably add it back in later check out of that and then I'll create a light source to wrap around this object now importantly I'll just change the family to a different one it's not going to be an ordinary light source so the most important step is to remember to change that to background and it must be capitalized because that's how the HDRI lighting is going to target this light source and enlarge this light source to wrap it around the object I want to light like so edit it true ambience, true ambience optimization use gel include only background procedural reset to default grey so that's the target surface for the light and the final thing then is to render options premium effects set it down to four rays for pixel for preview in true ambience scattering correction boost light set maximum ray depth down to four and we'll see how that looks. Okay, now there is an issue with anything in Trambian's lighting where it's the surface is perfectly horizontal on the underside. Now I've covered this in other videos, but I thought I'd cover this in this one as well because I'd have forgotten myself. So this video is as good as a reminder for me as any. All I'm doing is I'm just increasing the light output a bit at a time so we can see what's going on here. All right, so you can see the underside of this balcony is not really getting any light even though I provided a complete sphere of lighting so to correct for this what I need to do is to select that shape I know you can select the light source well it doesn't matter edit it and very very slightly rotate the axis it doesn't need to be much only a fraction there we go I'm looking on the dialog down there so that's rotated very slightly and what this means now is you can instantly see the underside of that is now getting lit and it was just because it was perfectly horizontal and facing down so that gives us nice ambient light I might uh, I might turn that down a fraction now let's try that and re-enable the sunlight move that round to one angle so I've got like a key light in my scene and so I can have some some nice lighting if I'd chosen you know different materials for this I could make it to uh, make it look even fancier but I suppose to risk of making the video go on too long I think I'll just uh, settle for as it is go into render options and select I don't know uh, 64 256 let's try and 
256. I'll keep the shadows sharp because um, it's a large scale object so you don't tend to see any softened shadows on it or if you do it it'll only be very slight from the sun and uh, see that's going to take 23 minutes to render at 256 so let's try 64 okay I've talked myself into doing soft shadows but only only very very subtly on large objects otherwise you run the risk of making them look small again and see what it'll do at that off five minutes that's an acceptable render time so I'll let this render out this can be the example image and that's uh, a very quick way of producing sort of science fiction -y uh, building using meshes, incorporating instancing, so the memory footprint is going to be very low, and uh, high quality lighting environment.